वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम अमिया कुमार दास एसोसिएटेड विथ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी तेजपुर यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन द इशूज ऑफ इंडिजिनस सोशियोलॉजी एज अ पार्ट ऑफ कॉन्टेम्पररी सोशल थ्योरी as we have seen the whole domain of sociology as a project emerged in the western part and it was attached to the project of modernity so larger theoretical framework related to sociology till now have a dominant figure or domination over other forms of theory in our academic practices mostly belong to this western sociological tradition so what is indigenous sociology indigenous sociology basically tries to establish itself in relation to the western form of sociological theories or sociological practices it is taken forward mostly by sociologist like said farid alatas and paulin j hutonji this indigenous sociology tries to introduce new ideas and language which can capture the realities of the non western world which is not available or which is absent in the framework which is available in the northern that is this western sociological thought or western sociological framework mostly indigenous sociology refers to the sociology which is based on local knowledge that means seeing knowing and understanding of the social reality or the social processes passed from one generation to another generation mostly in the oral medium another types of idea which is associated with this form of knowledge is often regarded as traditional knowledge mostly traditional knowledge is seen as an ancient form of knowledge which was relevant in the past but no more relevant in the present societies whereas local knowledge or indigenous knowledge is different indigenous knowledge is a form of knowledge which incorporates all local specificities which not only relevant in the past but that also works in the present societies in the present context to understand the social realities of these non western or so called periphery as you have seen in the work of alatas and hutonji this academic dependency of the periphery on the west has created a syndrome where the knowledge and other form of practices come from the western part of the world to raise question or to counter it we can see from various aspect that the how indigenous sociology can offer a framework to understand the sociology in non western part in a better and in a more productive way what is meant by indigenous sociology indigenous sociology is a kind of sociology that is projected to counter the western sociological traditions which are claimed to be universal but in reality that couldn't cover the non western social realities or it failed to understand the social realities in the non western societies like many sociologists they have said that indigenous sociology emerged to address the specificities of the speciality outside the northern or the outside the western part and to 
create meaningful conceptual tools to understand the social realities of the non-Western world. Most often time we have seen again and again the Western sociological theories or Western sociological traditions are projected as universal. But in reality, that universality couldn't capture the uh, realities or couldn't understand the specificities of the Western, non-Western world. Thereby, it came as a critic to it to counter that this form of indigenous sociology. Mostly in this session, we are going to discuss two uh, sociologists or two uh, theorists for that matter who have offered critique to this Western form of sociology in the African context and in the Indian context. We are going to discuss about Okio -O and Makim Marriott. Akin Sola Akio -O is a Nigerian sociologist who wrote the paper titled Contributions to the Sociology of Knowledge from an African Oral Poetry in the year 1986. This paper is considered as a significant to the indigenous sociological tradition. In this paper, he attempts to formulate a set of sociological propositions deriving it from a Yoruba oral poetry. This became the starting point of a significant and vibrant discussion in the discipline of sociology. Various theorists responded to this paper. The most important among these responses being, the, being that of Moses Akin Makinde, Obi Laoi, and Olifemi Tayo. The responses appreciated and criticized Akiyoso's paper. Their engagement with this paper raised several questions such as what is indigenous sociology, what can be practiced, how it can how can it communicate with the rest of the world and how far Akio was successful in doing this. As mentioned earlier, Akio attempts to contribute to this general body of explanatory principles from an African oral poetry. In his paper, Akio attempts to present three things. The English translation of a large portion of this oral poetry, the interpretation and various reflection of the meanings and language of this oral poetry, propositions from the doctrine of creation which is present this oral poetry. This is inductively inferred to contribute to the formation of a sociological theoretical framework. Everything is created. Alasu Wada is the myth behind this oral poetry. Alasu Wada is the myth of creation. According to Aki O, the myths of creation have a great importance across Africa and they believe God as the creator of everything. The people of Africa believe in a number of mythical stories which narrates the creativity of omnipresent potent God. This oral poetry studied in Aki O's paper is a Yoruba oral poetry which narrates that Ayusuwa, the self-alienation from community, is a result of selfishness and functions against the harmony and common good of the community. Not only Asuwa, goodness also starts from the community. It can be observed here that Akio generalizes the particularities of Yoruba tradition as African Throughout his paper, while doing this, Akiwawa is falling into the language of universal sociology. We can note that indigenous sociology has emerged as a criticism towards this universalizing tendency of northern theories. So, in this poetry, a universal principle is introduced in the form of Oshua. Universal principle Oshua means that with morality, all the good, good things should be enjoyed and good things should have, uh, should be shared by the community. It cannot be enjoyed alone. When Yakunga tries to enjoy alone, then the self-alienation happens. 
in his poetry he is trying to show that how through this myth of origin a self alienation or sin is happening because one single person tries to enjoy ignoring the community thereby in the principle of ashua it is shown that how the concept of social here is being important the concept of community bonding is being important it is coming to, uh, as a form of togetherness so from here we can see how he has developed or trying to find a philosophy that which can be useful to locate this indigenous knowledge or indigenous sociology and trying to locate it in the domain of local oral tradition so akio o presents these as nine propositions which mojes akin mikinde in his rejoinder to akio's paper refers to as philosophical principle of asuvada these are believe that these contributions to the sociology of knowledge from an african yoruba oral poetry so these propositions are intended to be statements of relationship between some significant elements of the subject matter of sociology namely human society the propositions are number 1 the understanding on the unit of life as individuals then this individual self's requirement of fellowship the impossibility of the corporeal individual to continue without a community self alienation for selfish pursuit as a sin the good society being the society in which the self expression and creativity of the individual is possible a good individual being one which hard working and the one who sacrifices for the common good every individual as having the capacity to be the initiator of goodness or the recipient of good or bad conducts the social value of an individual depending upon this conduct and finally the necessity of a social scientist who intends to understand the people and society of africa to know these concepts so in the indian context mckim marriott tried to develop indian ethno sociology where he tries to look at the local context of the hindu tradition basically uh, the sankhya and ayurveda tradition which is different from the western tradition in western tradition as we have seen it is uh, based on the binaries and symmetric opposition whereas the indian tradition he says that the three elements are most important in that particular philosophy these are fire water and air these are relational to each other and the importance on this uh, aspect is defined in the context of local culture so in his paper on constru constructing an in indian ethno sociology which got published in the year 1991 he explains that a social theory developed from the ways of living and practices of a community can be helpful tool for the analyst who attempts to understand social phenomena even though a systematic social theory is not needed for the people who live in that community like in this we have mentioned this implies anti equivalent or non symmetric relations in the indian context whereas in western context on the other hand relations are equivalent and symmetric these two relational sets the indian and the western are diametrically opposite to each other according to marriott there can be other types of relational sets as well which represent the specificities of other cultures marriott is trying to develop one such tool of social analysis 
from the Indian philosophical traditions. According to Marriott, the relational logic specific to one culture cannot be understood substituting it with the logic of the relational sets from another culture. This approach developed by Mackie Marriott had many limitations. He calculated Indian tradition mostly on the basis of the Brahminic tradition. So it was criticized by saying that Brahminic tradition is not the only Indian traditions. There are many other traditions. So when he tried to develop Indian ethnosociology, it was based on this Brahminic traditions. Thereby, he faced a lot of criticism. So if, when he tries to generate a particular kind of sociology, which is based on this dominant Brahminic tradition, Again, it will create another other which was done by the Western counterpart. Even though it faced criticism like Aki O, it was a major contribution in relation to the Western sociological traditions. Thereby, we saw the major two contributions by Marriott and Aki O in the form of indigenous sociology. As we know, Indian and African continent, they have lot of diversities and different cultures. In both of their work, they have agreed that they have tried to generalize on the basis of a particular culture. Even though they tried to offer a critique to the Western form of knowledge, Western form of sociological theories, in their work, they failed to develop a concept which would take issues of different cultures and different knowledge system. Like in Indian context, as we have discussed briefly, there are various castes, various communities, various cultures, various religions. So, if we take something on the basis of a particular community or dominant caste and their philosophy, it may not be able to represent other communities and other groups. So thereby, stating it as a form of Indian ethnosociology, he agrees and accepts that it has many limitations. Similarly, Akio work on a particular tradition it shows that it could not cover various local specificities or local cultures, rather it is based on a particular tradition. But looking at this kind of culture or this kind of practices, another concept developed by Pauline Hitonji is endogenous idea or endogenous sociology. So, it is be helpful for us to discuss this endogenous knowledge in the context. Both Yokoao and Marriott, they have given their analysis on the basis of particular community. Yokoao is giving his ideas on the basis of Yoruba tradition and whereas Marriott is giving his analysis on Indian ethnosociology on the basis of Brahminic traditions. So these are not the basic framework where it can address all the specificities or cultures in that given territory. They might fall trap to the similar thing which that Western sociology has contributed. But in this context, Pulan, Paulin Hatunji's work on endogenous knowledge is worth mentioning, where we can juxtapose his ideas with this indigenous sociology to have a more uh, comparative perspective in the term that we can critique, we can see 
the similarities and differences and thereby we can have a holistic understanding of indigenous sociology, endogenous knowledge and this western sociology per se. The difference between endogenous, indigenous and traditional knowledge has to be distinguished. The term endogenous knowledge is developed in the introductory discussion of a seminar organized by Hutonji. This term endogenous was preferred over traditional to represent the knowledge systems of Africa. So instead of using traditional knowledge system of Africa, the scholar preferred to use endogenous knowledge systems of Africa since a group of scholars thought that traditional is not the right term which can be used for a set of ideas which they intended to communicate. The so-called traditional knowledge was always understood as a system of knowledge which has nothing to exchange with the true process of knowledge production. Traditional gives the meaning of something immutable and fixed which is unable to undergo new changes. As a result, it sometimes ended up vanishing out of people's collective memory. It was seen as something which existed simply in juxtaposition and incapable of any or the exchange with the mighty systems of present. When the word traditional is used even inside quotation marks, it invokes the idea of traditional as opposed to modern. Endogenous is the new term which was developed to represent the knowledge which is part of the internal cultural background of the Africa. It is the knowledge which is originated in one particular culture and inherited through generations. It has a unique identity on behalf of that particular culture as against the dominant modern knowledge of North. The introduction of the term leads to some other questions about the origins of this knowledge. What today appears endogenous may have been imported at a distant time in the past, prior to its later assimilation and its perfect integration in the society to the extent of obliterating its foreign origins. On the other hand, the term endogenous is also different from indigenous. Akio used the term indigenous to represent the knowledge of a particular culture outside West. But one has to note that indigenous defines something with the tag of the so-called culture to which it belongs. It can be a Eurocentric idea on what the North thinks and it might, based, or it might be based on the Western idea or the Southern idea. It need to be perceived as a meaningful outside the particular cultural territory. Endogenous is a term which holds its significance outside the cultural specificities also. It originates from consciousness of academic dependence and unequal global power relations in the process of knowledge production. Endogenous represents the knowledge which is part of the internal cultural background of the Africa. It is knowledge which is originated in one particular culture and inherited through generation. It has a unique identity on behalf of that particular culture as against the dominant modern knowledge of North. So, to summarize this module, we have seen how we started with the idea of indigenous sociology and further we started discussing on Akio idea of indigenous sociology, Marriott's ideas of Indian ethno sociology. So where we have seen various critics and limitations of both of their work and towards the end we also discussed the Pauline Hutonji's idea of endogenous knowledge, the similarity and difference between traditional knowledge, indigenous knowledge and endogenous knowledge. We saw how these are different in its own form, own sense, how knowledge is related to all these concepts, where traditionalism is important, 
where local knowledge is important, where this universal philosophical aspect is being criticized, so on and so forth. To have a basic idea on indigenous sociology is to look at how this Eurocentric sociological theories, Eurocentric sociological knowledge initially presented as a civilized form of knowledge, more scientific form of knowledge, which is universal and applicable everywhere. If the non-Western people can follow the idea of objectiveness, scientificity, empiricism, and follow this Western form of knowledge system, their sociological traditions, it can be equally useful in the non-Western world. But it has faced, this claim has faced severe criticism from all the fronts. Mostly scholars from African continent, Latin American continent and Indian context, they tried to criticize the whole idea of universalism, their claim in the form of captive mind, academic dependency, economic dependency, and this world system theory, so on and so forth. To criticize that, we have here discussed on the issue of indigenous sociology, how over the period of time, the claim and superiority of this universal theory developed by the Western countries as a more powerful tool has been criticized and let, later on it has faded away. In this context, Marriott and Yokoawa present uh, their uh, strong critique and at the same time, they falling into the similar universal trap were acknowledged and pointed out by the other critics as well. So here how we have seen how indigenous sociology can also be a different kind of framework, alternative method, alternative tool and language which can help people in the non-Western part to develop a more productive conceptual tool, framework and perspective to understand their social world and realities. For more information on these issues, please log on to the EPG Parswala website where you have many more references and readings. Thank you.